All right. So I had thought that you could do shiny components in a LearnR thing, but that was not like coding shiny and then getting the output back. It's actually putting an input in and then like letting your student manipulate it to get different parts of the data or something. Um, anyways, it wasn't what I thought it was. So, um, but I decided, okay, what the heck, I have like a presentation. I'm not gonna go back and teach myself sharing again. On top of that, because I have like most of this fleshed out. Um, so my plan is to go through this um, kind of briefly is like, uh, I'll bring in a, a data set that we, it's related to what we've used, but it's not the same one. Um, go through kind of what we'll do with it and um, live code raw app. So that's uh, my plan for tonight. Um, so let's see. So lately we've been doing a lot of chapter recaps in these presentations, but I don't think I've ever been able to do that <laughs> and instead um, just get distracted by shiny all the time. So actually it's funny because I said, I, before like, well, like one of the first things I did when I joined Slack was um, set myself with a keyword for shiny and reactive. And so if you notice, if you Google the words in the Slack, I appear basically right after that word is said anywhere because um, shiny. Uh, yeah, so this time, uh, let's build a beer reviews app in Shiny. Um, along the way, we'll try to find minimally contrived um, TM opportunities to use map and friends like map2, pmap, uh, map logical, character, double, and int, forgot int there, uh, walk, which is related, uh, reduce, modify, etc. So prerequisite assumptions I'm making here, you've already read chapter nine in the book, that's why mm -hmm. we're here. Um, you've already, you've read chapter 21 of ARPA Data Science, i.e. the chapter on PER and, or you have some familiarity with PER, um, L apply or loops, basically just iterating over things. Um, and you've heard of Shiny, it's okay, you haven't built an app before, um, I've done it a few times. Um, so I should be able to do this decently. Um, feel free to chime in with questions, suggestions, and reminders if I forget a parentheses or just watch me figure it out as I fill in error. Okay. Perfect. Um, so the beer reviews data set I added to the repository, um, it's a, a little bit lower level because it um, comes from Beer Advocate and spans about 10 years of beer reviews, um, which am amounts to about one and a half million reviews. Um, so each review contains ratings um, in terms of five aspects, appearances, aroma, palate, taste, overall impression. Uh, review also includes some product and user information followed by each of these ratings and a plain text review. Um, the data set doesn't actually have the plain text review. I don't know why the keg would not say that it does. Um, in any case, um, we're not going to build a recommended model clustering doing principal components analysis. Um, today we're interested in PER. Um, so we'll be building a tool that collects beer ratings from users, i.e. you guys, um, compares reviews with the data set if I manage to get to it. Most of the time I think we'll be setting up the collection part. Um, and then if we have time, we can do some analysis on it afterwards. Um, so here's a data set. Here's a, what my setup chunk looks like um, in terms of the packages I'm using. Um, Arrow um, is faster than CSV reading stuff. Um, and the data set's already in the data folder of our repository. Um, and roughly the raw data looks like this. So like, like what I was saying about the um, fields, they're mostly character and numeric. Um, um, so game plan. Um, I've roadmapped a few features I'd like to try to include and should help demonstrate some functionals. Um, dynamically generating a review form from for each beer selected from a picker. Um, so basically so if from a drop down, you pick the number of beers and then from that drop down, it will, it will generate um, or, uh, like a little input for each of those beers. Um, then because there's like 5,000 beers or something, um, we're going to add some filters to the select option so we can quickly find beers by type, review count, and average rating. Um, we'll use map and reduce. Re reduce is a little, I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't normally use reduce here, so this would be interesting. Um, but Hadley uses it in, uh, Hadley uses it in uh, Master Shiny and was a good example. Um, we'll try to read back the ratings from the user. Um, be a good example, good time to use a uh, map logical character, double and integer. Um, and then we'll try to write one write reviews back and store it by brewery so that we can walk it over and um, store it there. Okay, perfect. Um, so some preemptive data cleaning, um, one and a half million rows is fun for data scientists, not so fun for app building. 
Um, so I, um, I, I went ahead and scaled the re reviews by reviewer by giving each one a Z, uh, Z score. Um, so review overall minus the average of for that reviewer. Um, and that gives you kind of like how much does each person like said beer compared to their average review. Um, and then grouped and averaged um, by uh, beer in this case. So we can tell you how many reviews of the beers we have, um, what the average score for that beer was, and um, what the average reviewer thought of it as well. Um, and was taking the top 5,000 of those, um, much easier to load into the app. And we're arranging it in this case by uh, review Z. Any guesses on what the number one beer is? I don't know if you guys saw this earlier. I've never had it. Um, I know I've heard it. I've heard of it, but I've never had it. Um, it's Pliny the Elder, um, uh -huh. which is a American double IPA. An IPA, so I guess they're not terrible. <laughs> I, yeah, it's based on here. You know, it's felt good. Uh, I'm sure she'll <laughs> she'll be complaining about it at some point later. Um, so yeah, those are the top ten beers um, using the Z score metric. So basically. The average reviewer rated it about one standard deviation higher than their usual average rating. Um, so it's actually quite highly rated. Um, 4.6 average over 2,500 reviews. Pretty solid. Okay. So first, uh, we're going to generate. First, I'm going to actually make it bigger so you guys can see. You guys see that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're gonna generate one is one slider input. Uh, so basically, first I'll start with um, getting in the data. So uh, there we go. Um, I prefer shiny widgets. Picker, um, I like configuring it and it has a nicer search bar in my opinion. Um, and the dashboard because we like boxes. Feel free to ask what I'm doing. I this is also just could you stuff. potentially make your own snippet with all this dashboard stuff preloaded, ready to go for you? Yeah, um, actually, I could do that as well. Um, I've just I've never made a snippet. That's like kind of adjacent to. <laughs> a, yeah, so this is kind of what I have set up. Um, oh, cool. Meant to do that. This is kind of what I have set up for the app to make the apps. I make it work. Um, basically, includes a CSS file reference, so it will break if you don't have it. Um, but I also like preload these libraries and so on. Um, you should wrap all this in a package. Shush! I'm getting there. <laughs> shush. Uh, yeah. So I'll get there. Um, anyway, so now that we're down to the dashboard body. Um, I'm going to go back to here. I think it should work if I scale this one like that and get the read in the data set. So I need the data set reader. And actually grab that, which means I need the here package. Um, in this case, it's actually probably not required, but you know, probably just so we can use it. Um, this will actually archive it. So if you're familiar with our GitHub repository at all, it will go back to the root of the repository and then go back down into week nine data and views data and so on. Um, in this case, it's, it matters less for a shiny app because it refers back to your working directory. But the um, R markdown files always build relative to where the R, mark, R markdown file is. Mm -hmm. So it may cause some problems if you're trying to refer to things up like X levels and back down into like data or something like that. Um, so it's just a good practice, especially um, to use here. Um, and we're going to read in the data. So 
years. Okay. There. Would help if I loaded the packages. A little tidy things going on here. Now loading this should work. 5,000 observations. Okay. Uh, next topic again. Generate one slider input with a ranking between one and five step. Wow. I, was, I don't know why I made all that. Anyways, uh, I will start with. So I'll show you guys, I don't, for those of you who don't do um, shiny stuff on a regular basis, I'll show you what it would look like to write each of these manually. Um, This will create an HTML box, and then from here, each code, each one you write, input ID, input ID, input ID. Any other real estate sooner than that? Expected, but I forgot that I need to zoom in. Um, so from the choices, we're going to use years. Box that. So the way dashboard pages work is that it reads tab items. Um, we don't have tab items to get those up. By the way, Control I will re-indent. Oh, so you don't have you. to do the delete and re uh, whatever what you were doing. Yeah. I, th I use Control Shift A, Control Shift I. I think they're similar, um, but sometimes uh, just control does... just control I, not control shift I. Anyway, <laughs> cool. I'm supposed to teach you guys stuff. Uh, I use both of those: the control shift A and the control I. And it, I don't remember why. Like it just depends on the context. My brain just knows to use one of them. Yeah, I I mostly like just default to control I because it's where I'm looking. I don't want to accidentally indent something that maybe occasionally I I use a different rule than uh, our studio wants me to use. So, yeah. <laughs> Trying not to, I'm really resisting the urge not to refer back to my example app. Um, but why don't you click on my paper graph? Okay, we're going to abandon all of that. We're just going to Okay, so now we have our beer picker. Um, it doesn't have search functionality without manually adding it, but this is kind of how you would generate each individual input. So um, what I'm hoping to do is set up, so once you select one of these, it will generate a slider input so that you can uh, rate your beer. So for example, um, a slider input would look like this. Um, Rating. Order. 
five step equals five, and that will give you a error. Um, that will give you a slider with um, kind of two and a half showing right in the middle. Here. Um, so basically, to do, to do this manually, um, you would need to figure out like how many beer, like which beers they would want to rate. Um, or you could do like beer number one, two, three, four, five, but that kind of forces you into just five um, beers um, that you could rate. And then you could pass the names of those beers separately. Um, what we're hoping to do is use map um, to iterate over the length of this list and generate us a um, slider for each one. So we're going to generate a slider input. Um, so what we can do is turn this into a function um, and return y instead. So um, slider here rating. Okay, so rating slider. Um, not sure what the argument's going to be yet, so we're just going to construct the slider input first, and then we can pass in the arguments again afterwards. Um, slider input, um, and it's going to be an input, input label. So these are kind of we're just going to uh, make these arguments and pass those arguments in. Does this function need to be in the server? Like, couldn't it just be its own little helper function? It could be. Um, I just habitually put it into the server anyway. Um, okay. Sometimes I'll want a reactive in here. So, you know, if I'm reactively changing the function or something. Mm -hmm. I think that one time I was reading an inputs and was trying to pass the input from elsewhere. Um, and didn't realize why it was causing a problem until like I realized that I had built it in the server part. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. So the minimum is one, maximum is five. Value is two and a half. And before we're at it. Five. Okay, so we're going to look at this beer picker. I'm going to call this selected beers instead because that's what this object will be. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and add some customization to this. This is sort of the functions I like to use um, just to configure the picker a little bit better. So if you want to see what it does, um, those options I just did um, add a search box and a select all. And select all and deselect all options. Um, so just minor improvements over the basic select input. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is read this list and use this, this input to filter um, our list of beers, our data set of beers. And then from there, we're going to map, uh, we're going to use that and pass it into a, um, pass it into this function and generate uh, sliders. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. Um, so uh, we're going to make a selected here's a, a data frame of selected It's going to be reactive, um, which means that it, it's a function that tells you that, that returns the current state of that object um, for those of you who don't shine often. Um, so basically, what 
input selected here is could be different at any given time. And so we're building a function that returns what that is. Um, so we're going to start with here, data set, data, data object over there. Uh, when here name is in, uh, so input selected here. Okay, and then um, data frame with peers in it. Um, and then we're going to refer to that object uh, and call it y. So uh, output plotters. And we're going to render dy here. Um, so dynamically generate the sliders. Um, input selected here, otherwise um, it won't work. So putting in a required field like this will stop it from generating the UI until it has input selected peers. Um, and then from there, uh, we are going to selected peers, case, because it is reactive. Um, we need to make ID, so we could just pass, uh, we could just make a input that's named brewery name, um, but in case you wanted to do something else, um, do like a different kind of review or some other kind of review, some other, so we, we could make a slider that creates input brewery name um, for each brewery or input beer name, sorry, I guess. Um, what we could do instead is, um, oh, hey, we got a chat. Bye, John. Um, we could, I want to mutate a new name for it. Um, so, label your input ID is going to be Make this smaller. Can you guys still read that okay? Yeah, yeah. it works. Works? Cool. Right. Yeah. Um, so we have beer input ID and we have the beer name. So we're going to pass the beer name into the label of, this, of the slider. And we're going to pass this beer input ID into the beer rating slider and use our first map function. In this case, we're actually going to use map2 because there are two arguments to this function. Um, so map2, we're going to map uh, here input ID. And here. And that should, once we put it in here, Automatically generate us a number of figures. Um, so when we pick a beer, object beer name not found. So we're going to assign it into an object first, and then from inside a UI function, we're going to It would be helpful if I pass the actual function that we want to call. Here, slider. Perfect. So we have one for the first beer that we picked. 
And now that we pick two, we've got another. So that's how you would use map to reduce some of the code that you would use because for each of these, you would, to make each of these, you, you know, you could have like five or 10 beers or whatever, and it automatically makes um, sliders for you um, using uh, per and the map function. Questions so far? Could you, um, instead of one to five, use the min and max rating for each beer potentially? Mm -hmm. um, like, like, it would have to be like min equals some kind of subsetting? Yeah, not even that far. Um, that would be a use for PMAP. Uh, let's say, let's, like, we could, so we could pass more arguments in. So, like, let's say we take, um, let's say let's preset the value to the average review. So we have, like, a review average number here. Um, we can preset the rating to that review average um, if we wanted to. And instead of calling, we can we can pass it as the we can pass the, another argument by changing it to pmap. Um, this thing, and then we wrap the arguments in the list like this. And instead of having the review start with um, whatever it would normally start with, your review would start with the actual average rating. Um, and you could pass other things in, like the min-max, um, and so on. Sick. Yeah, so you can functionalize like any argument that's in slider input. Um, you could functionalize a larger type of pipeline, um, et cetera. There were questions in the chat. This is like a good place to use walk too, uh, just because you're not really saving the return value there. So yeah, you're gonna basically just change team map to team walk, and I don't think you would have. It would actually to... change the. Pro it would change what you're doing because um, map returns the object of the function. Oh yeah. But, okay. So the slider input is actually an object, right? That's being rendered in the UI. Um, writing to the CSV, like I'm, I, was, I don't think we'll get to now. Um, obviously, overestimating how fast I am. Um, it would you would write X number of CSVs um, instead, and um, that doesn't have an implicit return. So it's like setting the return to null in your function. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I had initially, so we can we can talk about dynamic filters. Hopefully, that. Well, any questions on this? Uh, we can do dynamic filters, or we can skip to reading back the inputs and doing write CSV. Uh, I hadn't heard, I hadn't used reduce for this purpose before, so that might be interesting. Uh, so, thank you. So, I was open to see a, you create a map shiny function. I am mapping shiny. Like, this is mapping shiny, right? That's, that's yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I did actually go through and make all of the things that were in this in another app here uh, that's already on the repository. Um, so generate the slider for each selected beer. That's going to bother me as to why it wasn't doing that. Anyways, um, and you can filter using reduce, which we'll get to next. That's where all these examples come from. Um, read back the inputs and then write the rows to a brewery name based on walk. Um, but yeah, I think we'll move with completely raw code um, aside from this one helper uh, because I didn't actually think about using it this way. So um, basically because if you remember this, there's like, a lot of beers, right? Like, how would you be able to like quickly identify what kind of beers you would want to use um, in this 
in your review. You could do it, you know, you could do it in any number of ways, um, but usually what we would do is pass a, um, pass a parameter in here and make this whole, this picker reactive as well. Um, so we're going to do that. First, we're going to borrow this function from Hadley. Um, so basically, if the, if x is numeric, so if the vector is numeric, um, return um, is not an a x um, greater than val one and less than val number two. Um, basically, just return between value being um, kind of the min and max essentially of what that value is, and if it's a character. Um, return x in that list. And so basically you would use this to filter um, any subset of columns that might exist um, and return true or false if it works. So function filter, add to that. Um, and then <clears throat> Oh, I guess we need to make um, filter the filter functions. So, um, any preferences on what I filter the stuff by? Um, I'll um, Started with most uh, review count, so So if you want to make a slider input take uh, to do a range input, if you will, you need to pass in a vector of two things. Um, so let's do, start with like a filter of 3,000 and 2,000. Um, and that will give us a picker that will work. So that'll give us a picker that lets us choose between um, how many of these, uh, how many reviews you would need to use it. So let's say like, actually it's actually kind of odd. Um, so that might be worth fixing. And so step. Um, and let's get another thing to filter it by um, type. So that's another. So we're going to do the ill advised copy and paste. Um, this time calling it beer style. Um, so I want to pass the exact same vector so that it pre-selects all the two beer styles, then we would remove some um, if we want to put them out. Now we could now we have all the peers selected. 
Um, so we could remove, like, we could not consider, for example, American IPAs. Um, I don't even know how to say that. And stouts and so on. Okay. Okay. Um, and one last thing to filter by. Um, I don't know. How did you do all this? So we'll, for average review, we'll do the same thing. With the the beer style, do you uh, do like a unique? Because I think there was like a lot of multiple entries on that. Oh, that would be. Don't think an idea. Yeah. Probably a sort while you're at it. Does unique not automatically sort it for you? It does not. You shouldn't need it on selected. I don't <gasps> think. I don't think Shiny would care. There we go. Look, it's alphabetical and all that fun stuff. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, so that will do it, and that will prevent some duplicates, uh, which is a good point. Um, and yeah, so let's filter. Oh, that. I made two of the same input. That's. The reviews go from zero to five, and let's say we were only interested in looking at really bad reviews. Are they zero to five or one to five? Question. I think the slider we did one to five. Yes, one to five on the slider, one to five on the reviews. And we're only interested in looking at really bad reviews. Perfect. So we have a um, filter to filter box, and this is the clicking button. That probably needs its own box. Eh, we'll move it. We're going to generate this one again dynamically anyway, so not so cool. And from that from pretty, we can re indent. Control I. Oh, neat. I think control I is like less aggressive and invasive than um, magical reformat. So I think what yeah, I'm it just does the row that you're on or the rows you have selected. Uh, it, does it just move the index? Yes. That's probably what it's doing. So um, it just like moves everything sideways. Okay. New to me. Cool. Um, you are not happy to. Close something off the roof. I know it's mean, but I'm happy to see that even Tan gets lost in the parentheses in Shiny Apps. <laughs> shiny Apps are in serious need of something like a pipe. Yeah. I don't know how you guys do it. Like, I'm not a shiny app developer. Um, I've, I've definitely toyed around with it, but that was my biggest headache with it, which is the matching parentheses and all that. A really big screen and a really uh, strict rule with yourself about indentation helps a lot. When I was learning, though, I would put like a comment at the bottom parentheses, like, like this is the fluid page. This one's this. This, you know, yes. that's a good. That's that's a good idea. Tool. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. I've, I've been there. Uh, okay. Now I want to make something that will find the function that the parentheses goes with. Ooh. And you just do a hot key, and it'll just put a comment of what function that parentheses is for. That would be sick. Oh, Styler, totally agree, Tony, that Styler is awesome. Yeah, I, I do. I have the add in, and every once in a while, I'll just, you know, 
stores it on my page and it just makes everything makes me feel all clean and everything <laughs> yeah i found um, it easier to uh there were some things that i like disagreed with in the default styler style but it was easier to get everyone on board with using the default style than trying to adjust little tweaks and whatever here and there. So it's like, okay, whatever. I disagree with this, but I'm going to go with it because then it's consistent. Yeah, I think I, uh, I I changed one or two rules in the style there. I still need to figure out how to do the quotes because I like using single quotes for everything. So I wish I could change it. To uh, but that's just because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, you know who convinced me. I think it was uh, Thomas Lynn, uh, Peterson. He was saying uh, he uses only single quotes. And he's like, you just you don't have to press as many keys. You don't have to press control every time. And I was like, you know what? That makes a ton of sense. I'm just gonna not do that. <laughs> I, will, I will say, you know, if you press Control P, it'll jump to the matching bracket. Oh, Ooh. I I have learned that like three times. It never sticks. <laughs> It's funny because I also do the same thing. Okay, so I actually don't. I I, I kind of got lost here, so I'm gonna borrow my own cheat sheet and explain what it's doing. Um, but basically, um, because we set up these inputs, we're gonna read from these inputs um, and then use it to filter. Um, so I've set up the names of the filters here. Um, we've got review count, your average, and your style. Um, and then we're going to map over them to get the inputs of what those are. So I guess that's a cheap one because I think I made a steady eight seconds just on this. Um, but we're going to map it over filter names. And the FM filter that we just used, we're going to pass the name of the filter. Um, so X is the vector that we're filtering. Um, so we're going to use the beers data set and we're going to subset um, with map. And then we're also going to subset the input object to get, to pass this string in to get the right input as well. Um, Perfect. So what is dot dot one here? Um, so I ref I like to refer to map like the of the things you're mapping over with dot dot one. Um, I think Provence use dot x. And okay, so those are the same thing. They all translate to the same thing. Um, I just stick with dot dot one because I know exactly what that means. Um, I sometimes have a habit of dot x as an argument, which is bad. Um, or just getting confused as to where dot x comes from. And then dot as well carries a lot of other, does a lot of other things. Um, so I have a habit of just using dot dot one, even in map or dot dot one dot dot two. Um, and then p map essentially goes to the same thing. Um, I think I put that up in, in this lab chat. Um, so what is dot dot one? Because I wanted something like that for the pages um, and it works. So what that will do is map that, and then this will give us a list of three vectors um, with true or false, right? Because that's what these return. Um, so if it's in, it's going to be true. And then if it's not in, we're going to do false. Um, we could make an endless list of filter names um, and filter vectors, essentially. And so what we want to do is return um, a subset where it's all true or if any one of those things is false then call it false um, so you know we would use something like reduce to do that um, iteratively um, but like let's say like it's let's say like one of them is true and another one is false and another one is false um, you know that will return false for that whole vector so you run test this one and then this one and then this one and then this one in a cumulative fashion you can do it that way, um, or you could write it out like and, 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 et cetera. Um, so what we're going to do is reduce it with a function called and What that will do is get us a list of a vector of the same length as beers 
with um, true if it's included in our review count and false if it's not included in our, in our review count. Average or beer style function filters. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to filter the beer status set with selected. And since selected is a vector of true or false, um, we just pass it in like that. And we want to return a vector. So we're just going to pull beer names. Um, and that gives us filter beer list. Um, and then we're going to update um, our selected beers uh, with our new choices. So I'm going to use observe print. Um, update the input with session. Okay, I remember when I uh, completely forgot. So uh, and we're going to update the choices with our new vector of filtering. Not or type closure into type list. Well, that was easy because I forgot the parentheses here. And this is how this is how my daily, like every day, goes. Um, read the thing and try to figure out what it's telling me. Okay, so let's say we wanted to look only at bad beers. Well, finding the L actually. I'll go. Ah, here we go. So we can find bad beers like Bud Light and Rolling Extra. Okay. Um, and this would change um, if, as we change the review average. So more beers here. I think it's because they're not alphabetically sorted. Hmm. Yeah, sorting shows you the weird ones. Yeah, I think I, I didn't mean to sort that, actually. I just meant to do read. But I guess all the beers were originally read. Because it's a unique bit. Okay, so Oh, here we go. The worst beer of the rec of the whole list is Budweiser, throwing a light, something like that. It's these are all considered really bad beers. And yeah, uh, we're getting close to time. I can keep going, or I can skip the summary. Oh, holy crap! We have eleven chats. Never heard of Styler. I agree. I haven't heard of Styler. I, well, I've heard of Styler. I just never remember to use it. Uh, everything. Yeah, don't mind us. We were just having a totally separate conversation whenever you would have a little pause to uh, figure out some code. So. <laughs> Does anyone have a non contrived example of map, vector, and reduce? Do you want to explain that one, Tony? Uh, yeah, so like using the reduce function uh, in your math function, I just think there would be some real cool like use case, like some Fibonacci sequence calculation or something that you could do with that. I don't know, I think it would be really interesting if anyone has an example of that. Oh, make one, Tony. <laughs> Come on, Tony, you can do it. No. <laughs> You're the one who put the emoji in, so. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was dynamic filters, and I think we're close to time. I can keep going. Um, I have, you know, time. So you guys want to see I'm game. Um, I, I want to see the walk. You want to see the walk. Okay, so let's get the ratings back, um, and we'll skip things by uh, 
copying, pasting the code from the hints because we are cheaters. Um, so we have df. So this does the same thing as what we were doing before, which is subsetting the input object. Um, in this case, we want it to be a double, um, which is a which is a decimal. Um, and so we're passing the input IDs um, in. Um, I think I named it beer input ID here. So it should be beer underscore input ID input. Uh, and then subset input to get that. And then select uh, this rearranges everything. So, so user ratings first, and then everything's after that. Uh, and to make sure that that works, this is a button which we have yet to put in. So let's put in a button. Only one bad beer has over a thousand views. That is interesting. It's kind of like not that surprising, really. <laughs> I mean, would you go to the trouble of reviewing bad beer on beer advocates? I guess it's a sampling bias or something like that, right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, and if we select the beer, Probably a little bit of selection bias among the users too. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, we would get a submit ratings button, which may or may not work because I think I named this. And we will never know because I didn't do anything to tell us that we did it. So let's see. Uh, what can we do? We'll use it, we'll, we'll, I do this. This is not a record. You know, I. This is not a recommended way to see what's happening, but um, you observe, you observe the structure of DF ratings and tell us when it changes. So that will print structure this structure of DF ratings into our console every time it changes, which is on click. Oh, that might be why. Move that out of there. And put that here. So we're going to mutate this and reuse it again later. So I'm moving it out of the UI and into um, the actual DF select viewers part here. And that should still work. Perfect. So we have rated the beer 2.42. Um, if we change it to, we, we are lovers of Bud Light, it will change that number to five. And that gives us that frame, which um, is DF ratings. Cool. Did I lose anyone there? Does that make sense? That's very cool. Oh, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to butter me up. Jeez. Okay, so we're going to write this to CSV. I should be able to do this without cheating. Um, um, so, what we want to do is uh, get a list of 
ears. So what we want is to read. Um, yeah, so what I want to do is get multiple beers and store them by brewery. So if we were storing all of these by brewery, um, when you press submit ratings, you can see a vector um, of this data frame. So actually what I would do is I'll be use a uh, trick uh, related to environments called super setting um, or super assignment and I use this trick sometimes, um, which is to assign it to ratings and then return ratings um, as the result of the reactive. And what this will do is put ratings into our global environment. Um, We've had super assignment two weeks in a row, and I feel like like we're venturing into dangerous territory. Because if you're using super assignment, usually you're trying to break something. Uh, <laughs> you are no fun. <laughs> Did I break it? Rating is not found. You've got ratings in one place and rating in another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That happens a lot, surprisingly. It's like that thing where it, which tells me how to name SQL stuff. I never I never keep this out, right? So okay. So that should put ratings into our environment object, which we can then do things with. Great things with. Uh, like writing to CSPs. So um, we're going to do an observe. So we're going to write a thing to do the walk first. And then we're I have a that. question. You know how you assigned it within the event reactive to ratings? Like, couldn't you have just used DF underscore ratings? Or do you need to return something? I don't even have to return it here. It will automatically return ratings, I'm pretty sure. But maybe something else. I, I'm just curious. It should because uh, assignment and super assignment return the thing that you're assigning invisibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, could I assign it to DF ratings? No, because I want to assign the function that's created to DF ratings. Right, right, right. I forgot the little other arrow. Yeah. Um, okay, so DF ra so ratings um, is currently a four observation thing with something I can just view ratings. Um, there's four different breweries. Um, so what we want to do is write one for each brewery name. Um, I like I did this in almost playing with it by um, nesting everything except name. Um, and what that will do is um, put data in here um, and then I'm just going to mutate name I'm going to put it right into a data folder, which I already have set up here. Um, I don't recall. I think it should work, even if that data folder doesn't already exist. Um, but I'm going to put it into that brewery. Um, file. So we're going to create the file name. Um, and then I think I can just walk it forward. Yeah. So I want to walk it. So the file my own name. file dot write no, it's, it's um, I want to write you write something to a path um, and then you pass in more arguments if you need to um, so we can do that um, but because we have nested data um, we need to apply it um, as part of a walk so, 
going to walk. Yeah. I'm going to use the right CSV just to make sure I'm doing it. I'm going to use the lambda function. So um, I, I get into thinking and then I don't narrate as well. Um, but we're going to use the right CSV. Um, pass the data into X and our file name into Y, or a PDF file name into path, sorry, um, and um, append. So that, that will create a file for each. That'll create a file for each row or for each brewery in our tab, in our in our table in our table. So we're gonna so data is currently empty or has the beers.p data set in it. So what we'll do let's walk. First make the brewery file name and then do that and we've written a bunch of CSVs to our data folder. And so we can do that inside an observe event. So from an, a shiny perspective, um, we will observe event. Uh, we'll observe DF ratings in this case. So when DF ratings changes, we do this. Uh, DF ratings. Bucket. Um, so you'll notice there's a problem that may or may not occur if we do this right, um, which is to say that if we write the CSV but it already exists, it'll tell you that it may it, you didn't pass it like append or overwrite, so it won't know what to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is pass a argument to append. Where if file exists, file name, um, then append. Otherwise, don't append. That will help it not get upset if the file already exists. So these are all out, and our app should be able to now write to CSV. Steps are the best, fails are the worst, Step ratings. Did it right? I don't think you gave us any indication that it happened. Good point. Uh, let's do a model. Other than looking in the data and scene. Yeah, I'm looking at the data, and so I, I'm looking. I'm watching this, and it's not doing anything. Um, but let's say, like, say, so it should tell us that it did that, but I think it wasn't, and that's because I'm not. I'm referring to the app instead of DF means. The timestamps match up with when you clicked. Initially, um, I think it's writing DF over and over and over again, but I'm not assigning into DF anywhere. I was assigning it here, but I'm now wanting to refer to DF ratings here, because this used to be DF. But DF is a static object. So we want to write a reactive object, or we want to write the reactive data table. Okay, so all beers are bad except stouts. And there we go. 
and we save the CFPs. I think. Nope. Didn't work. Data equals. So it's telling me about an unknown or uninitialized column. Oh, because this is, a, is now not referring to DF. Okay. So it was supposed to refer to DF there. So basically, I'm creating this thing, but this was going off into nowhere. And then this column doesn't have data and file name here. So um, it was, wasn't able to yep. walk, but it showed the model anyway. So I'm going to put this back to DF. Despite that being a terrible practice, apparently. And it should now Wow, these are interesting figures. Uh okay. And it should it now build us CSVs. Great success. Success. Awesome. It did what it was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Great success. Cool. And of course, with a lot more time and some more UI pain, um, the app could eventually look like this. Ooh. And this is what the dashboard was supposed to do, but okay. And this was generating it inside the box. Except I, I like the uh, thing we added of putting the rating at the average. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that, that was cool. Um, and then submit ratings should also do the same thing and add more stuff. I did think of the notification thing, actually, interestingly, um, and add new stuff. So, there. Yeah, very okay. nice. Sick. I like, I like that you did a preview of one of our next book clubs. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but hey, come on, it's shiny. I like... You know, it, I, oh, absolutely. Oh, and and any, if I was going to do anything, it's pretty much a shiny demo. Um, no, this was so, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. you guys are welcome. Um, so yeah, so that was that definitely took up all the time. Um, so that that app's already on the repository and it does everything it was supposed to do. Um, so it should I, run assuming you have all the packages. Yeah, I'm not going to deploy this one on the R4DS uh, shiny apps account because. It writes files, and I'm I don't even know what that would do. Um, <laughs> nothing. I think nothing. Oh, uh, shiny apps, eh? Uh, yeah, you just never get you just never get them back. Yeah. So anyway, um, but it's cool for it to be there, and we can just run it, and then we can maybe launch it somewhere like on a uh, server someday when I've got more. Funding, <laughs> and the code is in the repo. So right, yeah, the code, the data, the whole thing is together. I um, I just love this so much because I think it's such a slicker way of implementing functions, especially in Shiny when you have to create a, a ton of sliders or something based on your data set. So this was really great. Yeah, definitely. Um, sliders, pickers, boxes. Um, it gets really so mapping them really helps. Yeah, anytime I have done a um, a map in Shiny, it, it always feels like magic. Like, because I don't know, something about the way I conceptualize Shiny, it doesn't feel like objects are really being returned. But when you make it work with a map, and it, it does, and it's not that hard, but it just, I don't know, it's outside of what I thought when I was first learning Shiny. So it's cool to see it. 
Nice work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, FS, yeah. Um, I didn't have, F- I didn't want to like go back and load FS uh, when <laughs> I was doing it. Um, most of the time, I I could like write it to like a bucket storage or something, which would be a different and not mm-hmm. local thing. Yep. Um, so it wouldn't even refer to itself; it would just write to the API or something. That's more painful than it needs to. Um, why, why lambda again? Um, in this particular walk case, um, I was going to use. I knew file exists was going to be a problem, um, so I wanted to be able to refer to um, file exists in the context of the file name. So that's why I would use lambda here, because otherwise, with just like CSV and then one and two, and uh, wouldn't work without being able to like refer to a vectorized version of this. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I, it's sort of like knowing the answers ahead a little, um, but <laughs> at the same time, it went it went about as smoothly as I expected. Which is to say, I expected a lot of like, oh, you did something wrong, and then like interpreting what it told you. Um, no, so, this was awesome. Uh, I expected that sort of like, oh problem. This is what this problem means. Okay, then go back. So, yeah. Anyways, that was fun. Um, if it involves Shiny, generally I'm always going to be enjoying it. Okay. So, um, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. We, well, I'm sure Maya still has her, like, list of, like, questions. So, so I, I mean, I, I have my indulgent uh, questions, but I think at this point, since it's a little late, I'll just throw them in the Slack. They're mostly just some like clarification questions on the chapter. Um, So we can work on those during the week. And then for next week, John's up. I am. Hey, John. And um, I think, I think that's it for, for um, announcements. And I'll also throw in the chat that we're going to like combo those S3, um, chapters so all right cool i, I just and i do have Tony, one ha- oh sorry oh, i just, I just I have one say- quick quick question for tan of did you have anything from the chapter like you know a lot of this was stuff you kind of i think mostly already knew was there one thing in the chapter that like was new to you that really that you can th- remember i don't use reduce like ever <laughs> I don't, like, most of the time, I'm not, like, like, so the example I got, uh, Maya found in Master Shiny, because she's actually reading that book, um, I just kind of, again, stuff off the menu off like that. Um, I hadn't used Reduce before, so I thought it was an interesting, like, conceptualization of, like, okay, so you're actually, like, doing logicals, and so, like, this condition, and this condition, and this condition, and this condition, um, and then reducing it with, like, and, or, and, like, something would be cool um yep i haven't done that before um aside from that like the like the hadoop reduce stuff i haven't used before so it's interesting to read um i haven't seen it as anything like directly applicable um predicate functionals i've seen and used um occasionally i have to like look it up and see what it does um and then like if you could use per you know if it all kind of makes more sense than like apply. No, I definitely agree with that. 